Hey guys, just a small project today. So uh, I'm modelling something up for a client and in it they need a small magnetic latch. So rather than design something custom, let's use something off the shelf, keeps the part price down, everybody's happy. So I found one here, it's nice and cheap, we can get them for like 30 pence a piece, which is great. Uh, unfortunately this one comes with a drawing, so I'm going to show you guys how we can go from something like this, like a nice dimension drawing, to a part. Uh, it's fairly simple, but you can actually use these images as references, and I use this for drawing up a lot of things. And it helps with uh, assembling things to check that everything fits before you print. So it's always good to make a, a dummy space model or, or replicate it if you can before you, you make the assembly. So I'm gonna, I've already saved this image, I'm going to head into SolidWorks. Uh, this is the base plate that it's going to be attached onto. File, new, new part. Okay, so I'm going to just kick in and tell it I'm going to do a boss because I'm going to do this flat nut metal plate first. And we're going to go insert, sorry, tools, sketch tools, and sketch a picture. Okay, so I've already saved off this image as I said. And there we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to, let's scale the known dimension. I always try and scale the longest known dimension possible because typically it'll help scale the smaller, smaller dimension more accurately. So if we say this is uh, 45 millimeters, that's what the drawing says, then we should be good. So often when you finish that, it, it moves the center from your picture. So we're going to model this part first. We're going to put it vaguely where we think is in the center. And the cool thing is we can change it later when we start drawing. Uh, so we're going to go and make a center rectangle. Now this isn't always the default, but you can, you can grab it from the drop down. And we're going to start more origin so that our part is around our center, which is all good. Fortunately we don't have to guess. Uh, we can just type in the figures exactly as they should be. So this is 45 by 12. And you can see uh, there's some of our alignment problems coming out already. So what we can do is we can escape. And actually while we're in the sketch we can double click on this background image and it brings up the sketch picture options. But it shows our sketch. So what we can do is actually we can just bring it up and line it up so it's a little bit more central. It's not super critical but it'll just help us draw things uh, more accurately because we'll know where everything is. Okay, so I'm going to cut these holes in and we're going to say these are 4 mil. that's what it looks to be. So from the centre point that's going to be have a lovely 35 dimension divided by 2. And you can do math straight into SOLIDWORKS. You don't have to calculate it out. And the native units are millimetres for me, so if you're using uh, metric you can type in or mm. You can do addition on anything, it's, it's really great. So there's loads of different ways we can do another circle. I'm going to use the, just a mirror feature. So I'm going to draw out this, this centre line. And if you select your line in a construction line and hit mirror, it'll automatically generate the other side for you. And that's it. I'm not going to put the fillet on here because we want a full round fillet. We could draw it in with an arc, but I'm actually going to do it once the part's made. Or once it's uh, once we're extruded in. So we'll exit that sketch. And we know the thickness from here is 1.5. So super simple. Easy. So now we've got our bit. Obviously we've now lost our background reference image. Uh, now we could stop here because this would be more than enough for a space model. But we want Let's make it a little bit better. It's a flat piece of metal, I'm sure we can improve it. What we can do is go into these visibility settings and turn that sketch back on. Uh, okay. Oh, too much. There we go. Okay, so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to do a full round fillet on this face. Fully round. So we'll bring up our fillet tool and we've got um, constant size. Uh, we've got variable and we've got face fillet. There's, there's also a full round fillet, which is what we're going to use today. So we're going to click that, and actually what you do is you select the three faces you want to fill it. And this, what this means is it'll take three edges, and uh, you say this is my A, this is my B, and my C, and it'll make sure that there's a continuous curve through it, so there's no break in the curve uh, and no weird joins. Now, of course, it doesn't matter for this latch because it's only a tiny latch. But as a technique generally, when you're filleting, it's it's great. So you can't always do everything 
So I'll do one side like this and I'll do one side the other way. So you see here this is perfect. Uh, now if I go to the other side and I, I just do a regular fillet. And this applies in SolidWorks Fusion 360, whatever you use. So as you can see here, it's 10. If I have a 10 mil, which is the default, you can get this weird arrowhead as the as the fillets overlap and they're, they're, they're cropping off surfaces. So if we go to just three millimeters, for example, no, not three in, three millimeters. So you can see that's not quite it. Now you could just go by eye and just go four, five. Let's say 5.9. Oh, I'm really close. 6.1. Let's say, for example, you go like that. Now, for whatever reason, you look at that and you go, "This is great. I, I think that's a good, that's a good fillet." Let's, let's hit go. Now, it'll look perfect, but you don't actually have a continuous surface here. And if you're doing something where that's critical, uh, that's not going to be as good as this easily perfect surface would be great. So we're gonna we're gonna delete that. And we'll do it for that. And we'll do full round on both sides. Yes, we could mirror it, but it's such a simple part. It's actually a little bit of So, there we've got our part. Uh, we can add a small chamfer. Because it's going to be a camera sunk piece. So we can make the screws if we want to be extra special. Just uh, two mil will be more than enough. This is really icing on the cake, it doesn't really need it. And there is our first latch made. So I'm going to file this as. I'm just going to call this uh, lag plate. Okay, so we're going to move on and model the next one. Now, I can actually model it all in here, and for the sake of time, I will. Um, typically, one part per makes more sense, but in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and model it straight here. So, uh, we're going to start and we're probably going to draw from this flat plate here because we can get all the dimensions off this part. So, let's start. We need to select a plane. We're going to keep on our top plane again. Space. Bring the view nice again. We're going to keep it about it around the same center point. type in our dimensions again and that is by and actually this is a, there's a little bit of math here because the whole width is 17 mil but actually the, the plastic part uh, this part here is actually a little bit thinner than that so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of math so, so 17 minus 2 which is uh, this dimension here minus this one and that gives us our body size so I'm quite happy with that uh, we're going we're gonna to just move it Ever so slightly. You can see this snapping line here, um, just to the left of my cursor, which means that it's in center line with this, uh, which just means we're, we're looking at it correct. Now I'm going to line that with the center, so it's nice. As you can see, there is a slight problem though. Uh, I've made a mistake. It's not 38 millimeters, it's 46. So let's fix that. Okay. Bring this down to the center, and that's much better. So, uh, we're going to start, this is just a basic extrusion, and we're going to extrude all the way out and cut out. But what we can do is, from here, we can do our slots. Now it says on here, 4mm uh, centre to centre, that's 2mm. Oops, try that again. We can actually just draw it out and then dimension it later, which is often much easier. Let's go to the drawing and we can dimension this to the centre. Yeah. And we can do some math again. So you can see it doesn't quite match the drawing, so don't always trust the drawing, take the dimensions because we're going to assume that that is correct and the drawing is wrong. Because <coughs> the internet scales images weirdly, so you can't always draw it. If you have a dimension, use the dimension. Okay, so we're going to mirror that over, same as last time. I'm going to go a little center line up. We'll select that, and select our slot, and for your mirror, it's done. So we'll exit that sketch now. I'm not going to do my fillets, I'll do them once it's applied again. So you can see the thickness uh, on here says 30mm, so we're going to 
go ahead and put that up. You can see now we've got this really big boxy shape, which is fine because we're gonna we're gonna actually cut out this profile. So there's, uh, as you'll notice, there's no there's no dimension for the thickness of this part. So the great thing about using the SolidWorks scaling stuff is we can actually do measurements on it. So let's for a start just make a sketch on this plane. Any plane flat to it would be totally fine. Uh, and let's just double check that this reference thinks it's 30 mil. So this thinks it's it's about 30 mil. So the width is about right. So what we can do is just draw the line here and see that it's 4.3. So I'm I'm gonna just make that 4. Point. I'm just gonna make it 4. So we're gonna exit that sketch. Remember that dimension of four millimeters, or jot it down, and we're going to do an extrude cut on here. So what we're going to do is let us just draw a line first, like that, and we'll dimension it to our edge and make that four mil. We can clip back to there, and we can see once again there's no real dimension for that, that cast. That, that clasp, sorry, so we can still exit our sketch. It wants to cut, but we're not ready yet. We're going to just make another new sketch on the top. I should have taken this measurement before. Yeah, sketch on the surface. Once again, we just want to see the distance. In fact, let's check first. Because it is the 46 still accurate? Yeah, it's off by about a mil. So. I'm going to add whatever it says to it. So this comes out at 28.8. So I'm going to make this. I'm just going to make this 30. Let's keep it simple. So we'll exit that sketch. We haven't done anything, so it doesn't save. We're going to edit the sketch, and we're going to bring this up. And all we're going to do is we're going to take. We're going to make a dimension from the midpoint of this line. Twenty nine divided by two, and that was pretty much our our piece that we were interested in. And then just going to close off that box. So there we are, all good. Once again, we're going to use our friend mirror to save us a little bit of time. Select all that and hit mirror. Mirror, mirror. Apparently not. Okay, something's gone wrong. So we're going to just select this manually. Maybe it's because I selected the dimensions. Oh, I've left my sketch. So. Let's try that again. Finger trouble today. There we go. It's better. Exit sketch, and we can just instead of hitting um, cut and then having to select your profiles, and select other profiles. Uh, it's much easier for me anyway. Just select the sketch first and then hit extrude cut <coughs> and it picks up all your sketch points you don't even have to dimension this cut you could just drag it like that or use the through all which cuts through the entire body so we're starting to get somewhere near <coughs> what we're expecting for our magnet now so the next part is we're going to add in um, we're add in this little magnet bar now we haven't got a great, we don't have an idea of whether it sticks out just the plates or whether the whole magnet does. But, you know, we can have a good idea. So let's extrude on this face. Uh, once again, we don't know the distance. I'm going to estimate it for now and then I'll correct it afterwards. So we're on that centre line following this, if you see this little dotted line that appears, that means you're following the centre line. But I'm actually going to just sort of manually do it for now. And I'll adjust it in a minute. So you can see it sort of follows that, that line nicely. So all I'm going to do is, I'm going to select this line and this line, and use a constraint called collinear. So that puts two lines in conjunction. The next part I'm going to do is, select that from there, get a dimension, and let's make this 1.5. I don't think this is critical, this really is a space model, so it, it doesn't matter. Actually, was that one necessary? Yeah, it was. Oh, we lost it. Let's just draw it. Yeah, okay. And I think I'm going to make that one millimeter as well. Okay, cool. 
So now we connect to the sketch. We can just extrude by two millimeters. Uh, we still want to merge the result. If we wanted it to be a separate magnet and body, we could we could break that link. But we're we're not really interested in that. And really, that is about it. Now everything is just fillets and round edges. So we're gonna we're gonna select our regular fillet again. Click the corner, the corner, two. Purely an eyeball thing at this point, and let's see what our corners look like with that. Yeah, they look good. Let's let's have that. And if we hop back to our picture, and have a quick look. There's probably some other fillets, tiny, tiny, tiny fillets, which we'll apply in a minute. So now that we've done that, uh, we can apply. Let's just apply my five. This is really just for people who like things pretty. Come to do renders, it'll make things nice. So, a little half mil fillet there. In fact, you know what? Half mil fillet, this is like a top edge. Oh, too much. Way too much. I accidentally selected the face there instead of the edge, which I didn't want. So, you can see it's picking up tangency, which is this tangent propagation. So, because we've put rounds on here, it's picked up that entire edge all by itself. If we'd actually filleted this corner first, it would have picked up the entire lot in one go. So I think that is good. So uh, that is how you take a model from a drawing and turn it into a part. That's it guys. Have fun.